改めまして皆さん、こんにちは。エデュケーション USA のウェビナーシリーズにようこそ。本日はコミュニティカレッジがもたらす機会と選択肢についてお話をさせていただきます。私、エデュケーション USA 東京のシルバといいます。司会をさせていただきます。よろしくお願いいたします。本日はですね、まず私の方から5分ほどエデュケーション USA についてお話をさせていただきます。その後に各大学からプレゼンテーションをしていただいて、最後に質疑応答の時間となります。プレゼンテーションは英語で行われますが、通訳のサービスがついておりますので、皆さんの画面の一番下の地球儀のマークを押していただくと、午後あの言語の選択ができます。そちらで、えー、サービスをご利用ください、えー。最後の質疑応答なんですが、最後まで待たずに、あの皆さんどんどん Q&A ボックスのところに質問を入れてください。英語で質問を入れていただくようにお願いいたします。はい、ではですね、エデュケーション USA なんですが、えー、アメリカの国務省がアメリカの素晴らしい大学で他の国の皆さんにも学んでいただけをいただこうという立ち上げたプロジェクトです。アメリカには約4000の高等教育の機関がございます。4000の学校と連携を取りながら世界中の留学希望者の皆様に公平、迅速、各、かつ明確な情報をお届けしております。日本のエデュケーション USA は、大使館、領事館とフルブライト奨学金でおなじみの日米教育委員会が共同で運営をしております。えー、我々のウェブサイトからも情報が収集できますのでアメリカ情報、アメリカ留学情報と記入してエデュケーション USA をチェックしてみてください。現在ですね、日本には6つ、6個のエデュケーション USA センターがあります。地域に沿った情報提供やイベントを開催しております。また、アドバイジングも行っているので、ぜひ近くのアメリカ大使館領事館内のエデュケーションセンターをエデュケーション USA センターを探してみてくださいそれではですね本日、えっと、3名いらっしゃいますアメリカから、えっと、生中継で参加してくださってます、えっと、アナさんアルベルタス・マグナス・カレッジからそれからローラさんフロリダ・インターナショナル・ユニバーシティ今見えてますねローラそれからマリアさん、えっと、ノーザンプトン・コミュニティ・カレッジから、えっと、皆さん3名ね三名の皆さんにお願いしたいと思いますそれでは、えっと、It's all yours Anna Very good afternoon, and what a privilege to be joining you all today. I am Sister Ana Gonzalez, and I have the privilege to uh, work at a small university in New Haven, Connecticut. I am joined today by my colleagues,、uh, Laura Pacchioni from Flora International University and Maria Dietrich from North Hampton Community College.、Um, let's go to the next slide. In today's presentation, we will be having an overview as to what you could expect from the two plus two model. We'll begin by discussing who can study at a community college. Can you study at a community college? You will find out. What is a two plus two pathway model? From completing your studies at a community college, what are your options? Where to transfer to? And When to begin the transfer process. Ultimately, today's presentation will also cover how you could complete your bachelor's degree. How soon can you complete your four year degree in the US system? And we'll discuss an overview as to the value and the possibilities available to you by studying at a community college, starting there first. And then continuing your education to a university to ultimately obtain your bachelor's degree. At this point, I would love to introduce my colleague Maria, who will tell us a little bit more about.、Um, oh, I'm sorry, this slide is, belongs to me, forgive me.、Um, one of the things that is important for us to discuss is that、um, community colleges tend to be more affordable. Than traditional universities or colleges. In the United States, as discussed previously, there are many options for you to pursue your studies.、Um, you could begin at a private college or university like Albertus Magnus College. You can study at a public college university like Florida International University, or you could begin at a community college. 
So now it is my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Laura, i um, sorry, Maria, who will continue in telling us a little bit more about the community college journey. Thank you so much, Anna. Hello, everyone. So I will talk a little about um, some things you can consider to decide if starting at a community college is a good option for you. So many community colleges are open admissions. This means that most of our academic programs do not require SAT, TOEFL, IELTS, or other common test scores. International students simply apply to the college and uh, submit financial documents showing they have funds to pay as an international student. Many community colleges have intensive English programs, which we also call English as a Second Language or ESL. This means that even if you are not completely proficient in English, you can still start studying in the United States at a community college, um, complete their English program, and then begin your academic program. Uh, because community college is often lower cost, many students will complete their general education core classes at the community college. You can also start at community college to improve your grades before transferring to a university. Um, sometimes universities are more challenging to be accepted at. So if you improve your grades at the community college, that makes you more competitive to be accepted at the university. Community colleges have smaller class sizes and many of our professors at the community college also teach at nearby universities. So it's still a very high quality education that you are getting. And some, some community colleges also have on-campus housing so that students can live right on campus with other international and American students. And you are living close to your classes, the library and your other activities as a student. Uh, next slide, please. So I think of community college as an excellent bridge for, to prepare students for university. And we have many offices on our campus to help support you uh, so that you can be a strong, successful student. Each student has an academic advisor who helps you choose classes that are required for your academic program. We also have transfer advisors for students who are preparing to graduate from the community college and transfer to the university level. We also have uh, learning centers, which are also called tutoring centers, where students can come and get extra help for their classes. We have uh, complete library systems with librarians who can help you do research for your classes. We have many databases of uh, research materials. We also have a career center on our campus. This means that students can meet with career counselors and prepare before they are graduating. So you can get help preparing a resume or a cover letter. Um, they can also help you practice for a job interview so that you are um, practicing these skills and developing confidence for when you are starting your career. We also have professional counselors for any students that need to talk to um, a professional counselor about any issues you are experiencing outside of your classes. We also have disability offices for students who need any physical or emotional accommodations for their classes. We have health centers with usually a, a nurse on our campus. And we also have technology offices to support the online parts of your classes to provide um, help and troubleshooting for students with those. 
Um, so I'll just talk briefly now about uh, Northampton Community College where I work. Uh, the college is located in the state of Pennsylvania. And at the bottom of this page, you can see a QR code that will take you right to our website so that you can read more information later about the college. We do have an intensive English as a second language program with four levels of classes that help you develop all of the English skills you need to be successful. So reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And our English students have access to many resources to improve your English outside of class too. So we have a language lab with um, video and with listening software for students to practice. There are also groups of people who meet to either discuss a book that they are reading in English or just general conversation groups to have more listening and speaking practice. And our college also has a specialized diploma, which is like a formal recognition for students who complete our full intensive English program. Okay, so um, once our English level is proficient, we are ready to start an academic program. And at the community college level, we have two types of programs. The first one are called Associate of Applied Science programs, which are two years of study. And when you complete them, you are ready to start your career. So there is a lot of hands-on learning in your classes where you are practicing skills you will need in your career. The other type of associate degree are the Associate of Arts or Associate of Science programs. And this is also two years of study, but it is preparing you to graduate with your associate's degree and then transfer to complete your bachelor's. So um, these, these programs are specifically designed so that you are continuing on for two more years to complete the, the bachelor's at the university level. It's also called a transfer degree. We also call it the two plus two model because instead of studying four years at the university, you study two at the community college, transfer, and then do two at the university. And these are just a few photos from students from my campus. The top left photo has students in our architecture program who are actually building the architecture models, just like they would when they are working as professional architects. The student on the top right is in our culinary arts program. And our campus has a restaurant on our campus that our students manage. So they learn how to manage the restaurant, how to prepare food, how to serve the public, collect money, um, you know, a lot of customer service experience. So the students are really practicing the skills that they are going to need like day one in their jobs. So before they even graduate, they're, they're practicing and developing these skills, so they're really prepared to start their careers. And the student on the bottom is presenting at a regional um, university conference. It was called a global student conference, and she chose a research topic that she was interested in. She um, did research about it. Then she prepared the visual presentation. She participated in the conference and she had the opportunity to meet and network with students and professors from many universities in our region. So these are experiences that community colleges are getting in their first two years of study that are really preparing them to transfer and be strong uh, be strong students at the university level. And we will continue on. And now Laura is going to continue presenting. Thank you so much, Maria. Hi, everyone. Um, 
Again, my name is Laura Pacchioni and I represent Florida International University. You'll learn a little bit more about my institution later, uh, but now that you kind of understand the first part of the two plus two pathway, which is a school like Maria's, um, you can kind of get a, a better picture of what that model looks like, right? So just to reiterate, the two plus two pathway allows you to complete your, your foundation courses at an institution that offers all, like a very similar, if not exact curriculum that um, the four-year schools have. Instead of doing all four at one institution, you actually have the option of starting at one school, completing the first half of your degree, and then transferring over into your other school of choice um, and you know, completing the second half of your degree. Uh, in that process, you will obtain a degree, which is what Maria was speaking about. Oftentimes that is the Associate of Arts or the Associate of Sciences degree. In the US, a, uh, the average bachelor's degree, the average undergraduate degree is about 120 credits. Some are slightly more, um, but we always go with that average of 120 credits. So your first two years would be around 60 credits. Um, when you hit that threshold, you will then either choose an institution that has an existing partnership with your transfer school, um, or one that you know has a very easy way of going about getting into their programs. Um, and why would you do this, right? That's always a question that we get asked. Uh, I work at an institution that is majority transfer students. And so people ask all the time, what are the benefits of doing this? And I have the answer. In fact, now we all have the answers. Um, because oftentimes um, there are things that you might not have anticipated are going to benefit you, for instance, um, the co-admissions opportunity. Let's say it might be more convenient just timing-wise or location-wise to start at a two-year institution, but you know eventually you want to end up at a school that they're a partner with. Uh, oftentimes, they have programs that allow you to be admitted to both schools, one directly, which would be your first two years, but you would also have access to all the resources of their partner institution using their libraries, their facilities, if you have access to them, even their online resources. Now that we have amplified our access to those types of resources in this digital space. Um, so that's a really great benefit because it ensures your admission. You don't have to go through that process again. Um, I know Maria mentioned this already, but I, again, these are some of the things that I found most important and I talk about with my students all the time is, Oftentimes you're taking the exact same course. So if you're doing a math class, statistics is statistics no matter where you go. A general statistics course is in my area is often taught by like the same five people and they will teach that course in all of our local institutions. So you have the opportunity of getting the same course taught to you um, at a different institution that might be a better fit for you in this point um, at a lower cost, which is my next big benefit. Oftentimes, um, the two-year pathway will, will be financially um, the best decision for some students because you are paying a lower cost oftentimes those first two years as the normal sticker price of a two-year institution falls significantly below even the most affordable four-year institution. Um, so that is a huge benefit that is very attractive, especially if finances are something that you are concerned about when pursuing a quality education abroad. And that is normally the biggest factor that stops students from pursuing education abroad. But you have options. So that's why we're so glad you're here today to kind of learn what those options are and, and the benefits of taking advantage of a pathway like this. Uh, we also like to discuss your opportunity to experience uh, work or internships. So in our world, this is called uh, CPT 
or OPT. Um, and basically, okay. Um, so we were talking about work opportunities. Um, there is one that allows you to work while you are taking courses or during your academic career. Um, it's a little early for you to know the, like the intricacies of those now, but one is CPT and the other one is OPT. The biggest benefit you will receive um, from transferring is that OPT um, when it comes to work authorization and work opportunities because OPT is your ability to work full-time every time you obtain a degree. If you start at an institution four years directly with no transfer model, you're missing out on an opportunity to experience that work authorization and that, and that work environment between your degrees. So oftentimes our students will opt into um, the two plus two model because they would like to uh, explore their career options and really take advantage of their time uh, being educated in the U.S. Um, our, our transfer students also statistically have higher graduation rates. We love that and you love that, I am sure, uh, because, you know, you're investing lots of time and effort into your schooling. So uh, we can tell you it works. Uh, and, and very often, we've mentioned this before in earlier slides, um, your, your admissions criteria is going to be more flexible, not necessarily just because of your grades, but also deadlines. I have a lot of students who are great candidates for my institution, but sometimes they just miss a deadline and I can't change that. But I still want them to end up at my school. So I will suggest that they start at a partner institution and then transfer in. And that can very much be a really good fit. Um, sometimes it is because they don't wanna take the SAT or ACT and that's fine too. Um, and when you do transfer, you're able to reset your GPA. So it's a great opportunity to understand the dynamic of a US education system master that dynamic and then transfer into your your final you know school where you're going to pursue your your bachelor's degree and and start with a clean slate um, and by doing this you're also expanding your academic and your professional and your even and your personal network because you've now been a part of two uh, school cultures and you have, um, a, a wider spread of people who can vouch for you, both professionally, if you pursued OPT, academically, and even again, in whatever social networks that you've become a part of in your time. So lots of great benefits. Hopefully you, you guys remembered them all. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Anna, and she's going to talk to you a little bit about the, these pathways. Thank you, Laura. As Laura previously indicated so beautifully, uh, one of the benefits and one of the pathways is the partnership between a community college and a university. And this partnership is called the pathway, right? And in many cases, many community colleges have very good partnerships that we call articulation agreements between the two-year community college and the four-year university. These articulation agreements are important because they mean that all the hard work, all the classes, and the associate's degree attained at a community college level is going to transfer seamlessly into the university. Ultimately, as indicated previously by, by both Laura and Maria, when you study this program, uh, you will be completing your associate's degree, a two-year degree at a community college, moving on to two years at a four-year institution where you will culminate your studies with a bachelor's degree. I know it could be a little confusing and later on we'll take more questions, hopefully, um, if there are any questions in regards to the transition between the two-year community college to the university, we will be more than happy to answer. 
we want to also point out that community colleges, uh, if you do decide to study at a community college and when you're ready to move on to the university, talk to your counselor, talk to your career readiness uh, individual because they will provide you wonderful advice in understanding this program. One of the successes uh, and really the the point, and if you leave with only one thing about today's presentation, remember that the two plus two pathway allows a smooth transition to ultimately achieve that bachelor's degree. Uh, it allows this transition that is seamless between your studies. You're able to focus in your classes, you're able to uh, get a feeling and a flavor for the U.S. educational system while you're understanding what the steps are to be successful at a four-year university. You are able to get a degree um, and really also familiarize with the region and um, before you continue the process, we want to encourage you to definitely speak to your advisors at Education USA. They are your best friends in this journey. And also reach out to admission counselors like Maria, Laura, and myself. We will be more than happy to provide additional information to help support you in your academic journey. Next slide, please. At this point, um, Laura and I will talk a little bit about our four-year institutions. So once you complete your bachelor's degree uh, and you're ready, I mean, your associate's degree, and you're ready to make that transition to the university, you have various options. And today I am presenting Albertus Magnus College, which is a small private Catholic university in New Haven, Connecticut. We are located half a mile away, away from Yale University and two hours away from New York City, three hours away from Boston in a very, um, I would say the cosmopolitan heart of New England. Our institution provides very generous merit-based scholarships. For those of you who are athletes, we do offer division three scholarships and we have many articulation agreements with various community colleges. We offer housing on campus and off campus. And um, we uh, welcome for those who are transferring in up to 90 credits. We want to encourage you to check out the QR code or visit our website, albertus.edu, for more information. Maria, take it. I'm sorry. Laura, take it away. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, so again, my name is Laura Pacchioni and I represent Florida International University. Um, for those of you who are wondering, where is Florida International University? It's in Florida. It's in, uh, more specifically, in Miami, um, which is a, a large metropolitan, um, beautiful city. It's very tropical. Um, we are actually the fourth largest public research university in the United States with close to 60,000 students. Um, we have full scholarships and partial scholarships. Um, and what I did wanna mention also is that as a state institution in, in, the, in Florida, um, we participate in linkage programs. And if you haven't heard of this before, uh, I encourage you to look up the Florida-Japan linkage program. So if you apply to this program, um, which is housed in one of our partner schools, um, and you are awarded this linkage waiver, you actually will pay in-state tuition in, in my institution as opposed to international student fees. So we have these partnerships throughout the state of Florida with many countries, um, but Florida loves Japanese students, so we want you here, and uh, all 12 of the public universities in Florida will honor this waiver if you are applying to our school and receive the waiver. We do have articulation and co-admissions agreements. Um, specifically, we have some really great co-admissions options with some of our um, 
neighborhood institution. So if you're looking to be in South Florida, we have some great opportunities there for you. But we also accept students from all over, including schools like Maria's and Northampton. So it's really up to you and where you wanna start and hopefully finish your journey. Um, we have over 200 programs for you to pursue. Um, at the undergraduate level and even at the graduate level, lots of opportunities for you. Our population is very, very heavily transfer focused. Um, and that is partially because it's very difficult to get into FIU as a freshman. Um, and also just because, you know, people start uh, all over and, um, and then they, you know, they make their way to the institution because maybe they want to take advantage of something like our underwater laboratory, which is the only one in the world, or they decide that they want to be a part of an accelerated program that we offer. So um, that transfer population is something we're very proud of. So if you have any other questions, I don't have a QR code. I'm not nearly as tech savvy as my colleagues, um, but on the contact slide, I do have um, our all of our information. I will say the key to accessing us is the Instagram because I run it. So if you follow us on Instagram or DM us, if you use Instagram, I will answer because it's literally on my cell phone. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and change the slide now. That's you, Maria. Great. Thanks, Laura. So I wanted to introduce um, everyone to one of our students at Northampton. Her name is Julia and she's from Brazil. And I wanted to um, share her story with you because I think it helps to explain the pathway that an international student can take when they come to the United States. So Julia came to Northampton and she took our English exam to determine um, what level English she was in. So she took our exam and she did pretty well. So she started in our intensive English program for just one or two semesters because she already had some experience with English. So she finished our English program and then she was able to um, the very next semester she started her academic program and she is a communication design student. So she is going to complete her associates in that program um, in December, actually. And so that means she is going to graduate from Northampton with an associate's degree in December. After that, she can choose to transfer right away to a four-year university to complete her degree. But she also has another option. So once she graduates with the associates, she can apply for OPT, which is optional practical training. Laura told us a little bit about this. And Julia can request this permission to work. And if she receives approval, she can work in her, in her job field for one year to gain really valuable work experience in the United States. So she can apply for that. Then after that, she can transfer to the four-year university. And after two more years of study, she will graduate with her bachelor's degree. And after she graduates with the bachelor's, she also has the option one more time to apply to complete another assignment for optional practical training. So because Julia started at a community college and she's doing the two plus two transfer, she can actually have two separate assignments for optional practical training, which is a, a benefit for students who start at community college. So we just wanted to um, share her story to help demonstrate the path that an international student might take. Again, that optional practical training is just optional. She does not have to complete it, but I think it gives her a really, um, it gives her an advantage because she's gaining work experience in her field in the United States.
with this, we conclude our presentation. And as it was shared with you, please type your questions in the Q&A. And we want to welcome back our generous and amazing host. Is that me? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Anna, Maria, and Laura. The, that was fantastic presentation. Thank you very much. あ、皆様、えっと、これでですね、アメリカの大学担当者の方のプレゼンテーションは終了となります。ここからえ、皆様お待ちかねのえ、質疑応答となりますが、英語のみとなります。恐れ入りますが、英語でえっと、下の Q
And um, maybe you have like a dream university you want to go to, like you want to go to Harvard, but your grades are not quite um, high enough for you to be accepted to Harvard. So what you could do is begin by attending community college for a few semesters. You know, let's say you complete two years at a community college, just so you're completing that full associate's degree, you would have four semesters of grades, um, you know, that you can really work on improving your grades at the community college level, and then maybe you're ready to apply to Harvard because you would be a more competitive student um, and you would be more likely to be accepted there. Also, I think it's important that community colleges have all of these support offices on our campus um, to help students as you're adjusting. So like the tutoring center, um, you know, we have peer tutors where you can meet with another student who is um, an expert in the subject you're taking. So maybe a math, a math tutor. You can also get a, a private tutor who is maybe a professor or a staff member who also is an expert in that subject. So you would get extra um, tutoring help outside of your classes. And also just those other offices I talked about, like the Career Center, um, it's a huge advantage for you as a community college student to start meeting with those offices and take advantage of all the help they can provide to you, like getting your resume ready. Um, they could help you think about, you know, if you're applying to a university and you have to write an application essay, um, someone from career services could help you think about what do you wanna write about in your application essay, and they could help you talk about the, the valuable skills and experiences that you have from your community college classes when, for when you're applying to the university. Um, also, uh, Laura talked about it, and I mentioned it a little bit too when I introduced our student, Julia. If you start at community college, you can actually have two separate optional practical training experiences. So that means up to two years of work experience in your field. If you just start at the four-year university, um, the limit on that is one year. So starting at a, a community college allows you to have more experience that way. So that's what I would, what I would highlight for benefits. I think you covered them all. I, I think so too. And we want to encourage everyone once again, if your question is not fully answered, please reach out to your, your friends at Education USA, or you could also reach out to us. Here is our information on this slide. The next question that we have is a tricky one. So let's see what we will be sharing. Um, is it possible to start school in April? And is it possible to study abroad for a year as a non-degree? Um, and I, I think this is a little tricky, especially for the four-year universities, where in order for our, us to be able to offer um, the traditional on-campus semester, you need to study for the semester. And usually when we're coming to April, that's coming to the end of the semester. Um, at Albertus, we have online programs that you could study from home, but I think you really are looking for the experience. Um, I, I don't know, Laura, Maria, what do you think on this question? I, I, you know, I would echo that to a certain extent. I think it's important to know uh, what kind of calendar the schools you're interested in are, are on. Some schools are on semester, um, some schools are, um, what's the other one? On mods, uh, modular. They, yeah, they have like a modular. The accelerated um, degree programs, right. Or, right. yeah, or they'll do it, um, they'll do it like every uh, six weeks or eight weeks or whatever the case is. So it might fall in line with some of the schools that you're looking at if 
you know, if, if you apply on time. Um, I, you know, there's a lot of institutions that'll start their summer in the, in the May, in the month of May. So you might not make that April cutoff, but you could start right at the start of summer if the school would allow you to do so. So again, it's just asking the right questions to the right schools. It already seems like you all have the right questions. And so at least, you know, now for our institutions, um, April's a tough one for us because we're, we're both on semester calendars, if I'm not mistaken. So, oh, the other one's quarter. That's what I meant to the quarterly calendar. And in the quarterly calendar, um, you might have the option of starting in, in April. So if you're looking at schools on that kind of calendar, um, the option is there for you. As for non-degree, really, um, if you're initially starting off in order to obtain that student visa, you, you should be in a, some type of degree seeking program or language program. However, if you were to do something like a transient, so go to another school like to take one class or a study abroad while you're already a student at an institution. Um, that's absolutely possible that you can do that, but your initial reason why you're getting your visa and coming to study with us um, should be either for a language program or a fully de degree seeking program if, if you're going to come on a student visa. Um, I also see some I don't know if you guys have any other feedback before I move on. I don't want to over. No, no. I, I think that's pretty much straight, but there's some great questions here. I know. I'm like, like you guys did your research. <laughs> These are incredible questions. Like for instance, this question about how do you find where to transfer? And when do you usually start applying for a four-year university? Great questions. Yeah. Um, I, I can start. Yeah. If you're, if you're looking, think about your ultimate goal. Like I, for me, my, one of my priorities was I, when I was looking for universities, I ended up considering the transfer route for a very long time before it just didn't fit what I needed. Um, weather was a big, big one for me, weather and finances. So I wanted to be in a tropical environment and I wanted to pay as little as possible for school. So I looked at schools that had my major in a place that I was I, I would be happy living in for within my budget. But that's what, what I used to bring down my criteria because there are so many options in the US. There's almost 5,000. Um, so when you're thinking about that, you know, when you start to consider transferring out a year, a year ahead of time, really, you should start looking at, you know, what are what are my goals? Do the school like those schools that you're thinking about? I when I was applying to universities. My mom had to have a talk with me one day because she was like, Laura, you're applying to a school that doesn't have your major. And I was like, no, but I want to go there. And she's like, no, you don't. It doesn't have your major. And it was because I was so used to hearing that school's name on TV. Um, and I, I didn't realize that it wasn't a right fit for me. So I think as you start transitioning out, you really have to have that conversation about you know, what are, what are very important things to me and does, do these schools have it? whether that's location, cost, program, extracurriculars, whatever, research, whatever the case is, those are the things you would use to narrow that down. And the key to applying in that transfer process, Maria probably has some more feedback on this. We always tell students about a year ahead of time, start looking. Um, you can start, most schools will even allow you to start the application a year ahead of time, even though, you know, it'll take you a little bit to actually enroll. But I always say when you hit that 30 credit mark or at the end of your first year is when you should start preparing for your transition out. At this, oh, sorry, Maria, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to add um, to, to Laura's great points. Um, like on my campus later this month, we have a transfer fair where there are going to be probably 50 or 60 universities coming and students can walk around and talk to different universities. So I have, I've talked with our international students and I've said to them, you know, talk to your professors and talk to your academic advisors and ask them, you know, for a student in my program, so I am an engineering student or I am a special education student, where can I transfer? And if you ask your professors in your degree program or your academic advisor, 
they already know where students in your program can transfer to very easily. So you talk to them and then you attend like the transfer fair and that's where you can talk to those universities where students commonly transfer to. So um, like during the presentation, Anna talked about the importance of articulation agreements. So that means like the community college and a specific university agree that the credits are going to transfer. Another thing that's important, um, which Anna or Laura also mentioned at another time, is that both institutions should be accredited. Um, and that's, that's like a formal process that community colleges and universities have to go to go through to get this formal recognition that they are providing high quality education. So um, the schools that you apply to, whether it's community college or the university, ask them, are you accredited? Um, sometimes that information is, is found on their website, but you can just ask their admissions counselors too. Uh, there are so many exciting questions here and uh, we wanna make sure to try to get as many to, uh, as, to as many of them. So we'll try to answer our questions as concisely as possible. Our next very interesting question is asking about how employers see this two plus two model. Um, do you consider that it might be beneficial or harm the student as they are applying for jobs? Um, what the question is asking, are there any different perceptions between the two plus two model and the four-year university? Um, personally, I think once an employee is looking at a resume that they really will not judge you. As a matter of fact, I think it actually enhances your experience, especially because you have the opportunity to practice OPT, do hands-on training immediately after your associates, get some professional experience under your belt, and then do the same thing as soon as you complete your studies. Laura, Maria, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I agree that it would in my opinion, it would be an advantage that you have, if you have completed two separate OPT work training assignments, you're getting different types of experiences. So I, I would just see that as an advantage. It's two experiences rather than just one. Um, so I think that would be, that would be valuable for the student. We've, We've had several questions asking about, um, you know, where to transfer to. And there's this one particular question asking if, you know, a student can transfer from California to New York. Uh, so I, I think there is a lot of interest in regards to the transition. Uh, what advice do you have to, to the students? I can, I can oh. Go ahead, Laura. <laughs> no, no, no. I think your your feedback is you're working with them on the ground. I'm on the receiving end of that. So you can definitely take that one. Okay. Yeah, I can I can start. So um it's very helpful to know where you want to end up um in terms of a university. So if a student starts at a community college, they will have options to transfer to universities. But it's even better if you have a, a whole plan in your mind where you, um, you know where you wanna go to because then you can talk to that university and say, which community colleges do you have direct transfer agreements with? You're also able to ask that university as well as those community colleges, are you all accredited? Meaning you know, they, they are providing accredited edu education to students. Um, so it really helps if you have like a long-term planned plan in mind. And I know that can be challenging for students because sometimes you change your mind along the way and that's okay. But to have some idea of like what your, what your goals are for longer than just one semester at a time, you know, to have that plan um, I think is really good because then you're going to be 
um, you're going to be staying on track. You're going to be starting somewhere that is preparing you to go somewhere else and the credits are going to transfer. So that's the most ideal way. You know, sometimes people change their minds and they are, are going a, a path that is not quite as direct, but that's okay too. There are, I think we could bundle these questions up in regards to so many choices, which one to choose, talk to your Education USA advisor. They will guide you in regards to the choices and will have real and honest conversations with you in regards to what your desires for your American education experience will be. And in regards to the question about, do I have to choose a major at a community college? Um, Maria can tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, um, most, most students do choose a major at community college. Um, so they have a plan in their mind of what they want to, what they want to earn a bachelor's degree in. So, you know, like I could decide I want to be an engineering student. So I would declare the engineering major at the community college, graduate with my associates in engineering, and then transfer to a university to complete that bachelor's. Um, there are also... So that's like for someone who really knows what they want, they know engineering. You know, someone might else might pick biology or a different program. Then there are programs that are designed to be a little bit more general for students who are still deciding what their goals are. So like my community college has several programs in our liberal arts program where you can pick you can declare a major like liberal arts with an emphasis in psychology or liberal arts with a focus in sociology. So you're taking more general classes, but you are choosing a focus area. Um, but basically you're completing a lot of the, the core general education classes at the community college um, those liberal arts programs are designed so that if you do change your mind a little bit uh, along the way, they're more general in the beginning so that you have time to explore um, before you kind of get more specific with your studies. We will, thank you, Maria. We will take one last question and I think it would be worthwhile for the three of us to contribute to this question. And um, Laura answered it uh, on the text, but I think it's important for us to talk a little bit about scholarships and financial support available for international students who are looking to study at community colleges and um, our universities and colleges. Um, so, um, Laura, I know you typed it on your uh, on the text, but can you summarize it? Tell us a little bit about. Sure. Yeah, and and we don't have to go into mine specifically, but in general, the rule of thumb is always ask your admissions representative. Most of us have some type of database that you can access, and we'll tell you what to look for. So we'll tell you, hey, actually, you know, we do have a scholarship and you're interested in business, wonderful. We have several for business, go to this website. We'll tell you, um, I know so many students who apply to my institution for spring and I'm like, maybe try for fall so you can get more funding. So it's just about having that conversation with us because the funding is there. We would not be presenting to you um, we wouldn't be out in the world talking to students that we wouldn't, you know, support through their process. And we want to make sure if you want to come to our schools, we want you here and, and finances, you know, shouldn't be an obstacle. So if we can help meet you where you are, where, where you are, we, we'll do our best to, to make that happen. Um, all of us have our really unique opportunities and, and stuff that's special to us. I mean, in and of itself, just going to a school like Northampton, you're already going to pay less. So you already have something like that on your plate. And then I'm sure you have opportunities on top of that. Um, private institutions have more autonomy and how much money they can give you because they completely control their funding. I'm a public school, so I can give you what I can give you. And there's no question. There's no negotiation. So again, it's about that conversation and, and making sure that you're communicating what your true needs are. 
and, and Laura makes a very good point, especially understanding the, the fact that you have many options and there are private institutions like Albertus Magnus College, there are public institutions like Florida International University, and at least for many private universities like my own, we don't charge out-of-state tuition, so that's a cost-saving generator. We offer very generous scholarships, and we really love to have community college students come because they come with, um, a, a, they're focused, and they have an idea of what, what they're doing. Um, also, we want to support students who have the desire to complete their bachelor's degree. So there are, like Laura indicated, there are funding support available, but you have to talk to your admissions counselor. Maria, what about uh, at the community college level? Yes, so our community college offers some uh, scholarships for international students. And the way that we manage it is that students first arrive to the college, they take their first semester of classes, and then we would contact the students and let them know about any available funding they can apply for. So they would receive instructions about how to apply for scholarships. And I do know that some of the school, some of the universities that our students transfer to specifically offer scholarships to students who are transferring to that university. So that can be another, another thing to consider. Um, you know, if you're starting at community college, there may be more scholarship opportunities as a transfer student too. Thank you all so much for your brilliant questions. And once again, reach out to your Education USA advisor. They are your best friends in this journey. And uh, thank you for allowing us to chat with you all. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. えっと、皆様、本日は、ご参加いただきありがとうございました。え途中ですね、テクニカルトラブルにより、一時中断されてしまうというちょっと事故に見舞われましたが、無事に戻ってきて、えまたあの無事にえっとウェビナーを終了することができました。最後まで見てくださった皆様、本当にありがとうございます。それから質問もたくさんいただきました。ありがとうございます。えっと